Welcome to the neighborhood. Welcome to the podcast. We are so glad that you joined us today. Mm -hmm. And um, we are in the midst of the Play and Pray Challenge. We said this last time. That's right. But I just as a quick refresher, mm -hmm. um, Play and Pray is the challenge we begin our summer with. At least for those who were in the Northern Hemisphere. Here's our little booklet <clears throat> that right. we had developed with all of the ways to do the Play and Pray Challenge. So the three things that you do for the Play and Pray Challenge That's right. are... Date night, which we talked about in the previous podcast, right? right. So you and your spouse go out on a date night. Right. Number two... Is today's topic, Family Fun Day. Right. And the third and final is Enthrone Jesus is the mm -hmm. King of Your Home, which yep. again happens on, um, it, it can happen really any time. Um, the church recommends that right. you do it maybe during the month of June, because it's the month of the mm -hmm. Sacred Heart. June 16th this year yeah. happens to be uh, the uh, the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And I was looking, we were going to do a podcast on the enthronement, but then I looked back and in September we did a podcast on the nine first Fridays to change the world. And you may want to go and check that out right. because it's we talk about um, devotion to the Sacred Heart, nine first Fridays. And, and we do one called Jesus King of the Home, another right. one. Um, mm -hmm. So we won't be doing that again this year, but we will link right. uh, to those other episodes. Absolutely. Uh, but we realized- And at I will least, write that down so we don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, we realized as we were going through the Play and Pray Challenge and thinking about, okay, what do we want to remind people of? Is just to kind of- Yeah. I, we are the excuse for you to do the things that you really already know, right? We're, we're probably not very you little- You all know that they should, they all know that you, they should be doing these things. Yeah. And, and, and and it's also there. There, I don't think that we're saying things that are revolutionary. Right. I think our our the genius of our podcast, if you can call it that, is simply we just give you an excuse and an <laughs> opportunity to have that conversation no, with your it's spouse. The genius of the podcast is that it's really not genius. genius. That's right. That's right. We're just it's ordinary. Not we're and, just regular people. <laughs> and we but always what, say that we're not experts. That's you right. You know, we're right. we're just we're just brothers and sisters who we're are experts on our family, but really nobody <laughs> else's family. Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Sometimes. But before we get into the topics today, That's right. uh, I want to talk about two things. Number one, new website. Oh, go I can't check tell it you. out. Oh my god. If gosh. you haven't already gone yes. to messyfamilyproject.org, just go there and, right. and, and shoot us a little email and say, hate your new, I mean, love your new <laughs> website, whatever, you know. We've worked so hard on this, so we would appreciate some, like a thumbs up, basically. Yes, even. Yeah. Because when um, we're virtual, like I, I, yeah. I'm an extrovert, I feed off of a group a, a yeah. participation and interaction. <laughs> Just let us know. What do you think? Yeah. And we have on, we have broken down the four different topics of family culture, parenting, marriage, spiritual life. There's videos on each one of those pages. There's upcoming events that you can check out. There's upcoming courses that you can check out. All of our resources are just laid out so nicely. Right. And I just think everyone, I think you all love it. Yeah. There's, so there's new resources that were hidden or that, that we've forgotten that we kind of brought back to life yeah. as well as some new stuff there, both in the video teachings and some other stuff there. Yeah. I think you'll really enjoy uh, the new website and hopefully it'll make it easier for you to navigate. You're like, okay, where do I start with this this right. huge mess. So this is our first time listening to episode where I think we're in over 240, right? And so if you're like, where do I begin? Where do I go? Well, this is going to help you break yes, down where you're at. go to the website at. and then you'll know where to go. Yeah. Uh, second thing is... Very exciting. Very exciting. It is the Catholic Couples Getaway. And that's what I was going to say. Gonna say I, just, okay. I, I was afraid to say it because I was afraid you're going to say something else. <laughs> I'm like, well, are we on the same page? I was like, eh, this is very exciting. And are we going to say the same thing? Yes. Catholic Couples Getaway that we are um, very, very excited to go on with our co-hosts, Chris and Natalie Stefanik. It will be the four of us leading the entire time. That's right. With a priest or two that will join us. Exactly. Father Sean Monahan for sure. And we may have a second priest that's joining us as well. The place that we're going has thousands of five-star reviews from like regular people. And it is in the Dominican Republic. It is gorgeous. Punta Cana is amazing. Punta Cana, which I've never been to, but I'm very, very excited to go now. And um, and this the greatest thing about the getaway is that it's not a retreat and it's not a vacation. So it's not a retreat, meaning that- Like, oh, both of those things are good. Those, both of those things are good. But for couples, what we have found that couples need is number one, they need um, some tools, yeah. right? They need tools to say, how do we have better conversations? Right. 
how do we take our relationship to the next level? If you're struggling, this can help you. If you're doing good, we can take you to great. <laughs> All right. So we're going to give you some great tools. And then the second thing that I think couples really need is they need spiritual refreshment. They need time yeah. to pray. Yeah. They need time to be with the Lord. They need time to just allow the Lord to love them. And last, they just need to rest, yeah. <laughs> rest, really <laughs> recreate, right? It's true, yes. true leisure. Yes. Um, and, and it's, it's going to be so great because it has this great balance. Like you said, right? It, it puts first things first. Exactly. It gets your spiritual life. It gets your marriage, uh, all back in order to kind of recharge you, mm. you know, particularly at the beginning of the year. So this will be in the, um, February next year when it's cold and dreary, at least here in Ohio, yeah. we want to bug out. We want to go someplace nice and warm. So this might be a great gift mm -hmm. uh, that you give to your spouse. Yep. Or we have actually had couples who gave that gift to someone else. Right. Um, and so whatever you want to um, see in this is an opportunity right. for you to grow in your marriage or to right. bless somebody else. And we um, do have our early bird discount ending the end of this month. That's right, end of and June. so just go and put a $500 deposit or something. Mm -hmm. Hold your spot, get you the early bird discount, and then you can just kind of work on paying it off for the, the rest of the year. Yeah, no, but it's... No, uh, for the next couple of months. That's yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Not the year. Yeah, <laughs> not, not in a whole year, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so go check out, and you can find all of that at either catholiccouplesgetaway.com or just go to our website and you will find it right That's there right. On, the, on the homepage. All right, so let's get into it here. All right, so what we're talking about today is Family Fun Day. Right. All right, so uh, we had mandatory fun uh, in our house growing mm -hmm. up here with our kids, mm -hmm. and um, and we required them to have fun. <laughs> and before we get into what we required them to do. Why would we do this? Why in the world would anyone want to do this? Okay, so why because don't you I start think, I think just the reality is that we all are busy, and we have other lots of things to do. And it's really important for us. I have a million things us. to do. I wake up I in the middle like of the night right thinking now, about all the I things I have, have to do. We shouldn't even be here. We <laughs> don't have we time doing? to do this podcast. <laughs> but this podcast is for busy moms and dads. That's right. That's and right. so we begin with the why because we think that motivation, that importance of the why is going to make you say, this. we want to make this a priority. That's why we want to start with the why. And that's right. why we do that often, right? Right. Um, but for us, you know, the first thing that we look at is um, one of the things that we are required to do as <laughs> parents is to love our kids no matter what. Mm -hmm. And a way that helps us elevate, say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm loving my kids. <laughs> oh, it's tough love, it's this, it's that. Okay, what we wanna be able to say is, do you delight in your kids? Yeah. Uh, do they know that you delight in them? That, right. that you look at them. Because it's not enough to delight in them, they have to, you have to communicate that's that right. delight. <laughs> that's right, and, and, and it's so important for us as parents uh, to not get distracted by all the things that are going on regarding our kids, meaning um, how are they doing at school? Yeah. Do they do their chores? How are they doing with their siblings? Right. All these other things. Mm -hmm. Are we um, always demanding of them? Are we always requiring things of them? Do we have what might be perceived as conditions upon our love? Mm. But, a, but a family fun day says, yeah. I want to be luxurious in giving you and almost wasting my time. I was just going to say, do you ever hear that saying, we waste time with those we love? That's right. That's what. That's when people know that they're really loved. It's when somebody else is like, you know what? All I need to do is just be with you right now. That's right. That's all. I have other things that I could be doing, but I'm not going to... I'm just going to waste my time with you. And our time is probably our most valuable uh, commodity right. that right. we we own and can control. And by giving of our time, mm -hmm. by focusing on our children and our family. Because I think a lot of times our default with our kids is ordering them around, but also <laughs> um, <laughs> seeing their weaknesses, yeah. you know, and seeing their weaknesses and not seeing all of the joy that they are just for who they are. Just simply not because of what they do, like you just said, right. but really for who they are. And so when you express that, what you're doing is that you're forming their identity. And their identity, their first identity is that they are your son or daughter. Right. And that you delight in them and God, their heavenly father, delights in them. Right. And that, that um, message is you are good for who you are. Yeah, not what you do, not what you yield, what you produce for me, or how you either make me feel or make right. me look good or whatever. Right. It's just, I right. love you for you. That's right. And right. that's what that's what getting away uh, in a family fun day, whether it's at home or, or elsewhere, it's it's communicating delight 
in your children and and they they feel that they know okay that. so another reason um second reason to do a family fun day is that it really does help your relationships yeah it's kind of like i always think of it as like kind of like grease in the wheels mm -hmm. you know like if you think about a um an office right if you look at an you know an office or like a team some kind of like team out in the world that they have everybody has to work together and what do they do sometimes pete they go on like a you know retreat together right or go they away. will yeah. have lunch together once a week or something like that or they will make sure that they're doing things they celebrate people's birthdays right. you know they simple do that things. simple things that they do in a business environment shouldn't we be doing that in our homes Right, yeah. because the same thing is true is that when you just kind of have some fun together, it helps kind of fill up, like everybody has a- um, Emotional. An emotional love, love tank, tank. Right. you know, and they talk about this in the book, The Five Love Languages. So we all have like an emotional love tank. Or a bank that account needs, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That needs to get filled up. That needs to get filled up. And that gets filled up. When that is filled up, then it's more easy to accept when, you know, your sister takes your sweater out of your room. You know, it's right. like, it's a little bit, you're a little bit more, oh, okay, that was annoying, but whatever. You know, and you can accept your parents' correction a little bit better. Or you can just kind of put up with the regular annoyances in the home. Someone doesn't do their chores or giving people the benefit of the doubt. All of that happens when we have a full love tank, when we just, from spending time together. And and when, you know? as parents, we, we often talk about our family culture. At least, you know, right. this is something that we need to be focused on. And the three things we say that get passed on by your family culture is a deep sense of identity, belonging, and mission. Mm -hmm. That's what our family culture, and, and a family fun day is part of mm -hmm. uh, the, the habits of the home. And we already talked about how it, it, it reinforces the, belo the identity, identity. Uh, for your kids in the delight in who they are as your beloved son or daughter. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're also talking about the belonging. Uh, okay, in this family fun, what we are saying is you belong in this community, right? right? You belong here and I have a place because you know what? If if uh, if all we're doing is kind of pointing our fingers at our kids or the kids are simply fighting with each other or, mm -hmm. uh, they're, or they're just off doing their own thing. That's right, isolated from each other. Yeah. That's not belonging, yeah. that's not community. Yeah. And so, so this Family Fun Day, as you said, builds that relationship, builds that unity and community that is required to make your family work. Right. Um, and that's and help those siblings who maybe are fighting are always at odds together. Yes. It's like when you can do something where you're having some kind of fun, then it kind of helps those, especially siblings who maybe have a hard time getting along. And, and, well, and what you do in that is you're, you're not taking, you're taking two opposing forces that might be butting heads mm -hmm. if they're fo fo focused on each other, where you're actually getting them to work in parallel. Right. And they're all focused on the same thing. Hey, we're all having this fun together. Right. We're all part of this family. Right. Um, in a, a real way. Because the reality is that normally, like when the home, within the home, like I'm always working on a project. I am, especially in the summertime, <laughs> yeah, like I'm yeah. constantly outside and I'm working in the garden or I'm, you know, trying to get stuff done in the and house. And when you're trying to do that, what are the kids? They're interrupting me. They're, they're interrupting <laughs> or you. They're, or, they're, or they're wanting to help me or not wanting to help if I do need their help. And that's, help. When we get, that's when we as parents get very frustrated because right. we're actually trying to get something done. It's like right. if we did nothing but just focus on them, They'd probably be fine. Yeah. And so that's what the family fun day is. So it helps your relationship with your children and helps your kids' relationships with each other and, and it helps their relationship with you. And 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 it really does set proper expectations for the parents, right? So that if you're like, okay, I am I, I'm not in I'm trying to get this gardening or work on the yeah. family budget or <laughs> yeah. excess work or whatever might be going on, side hustles, whatever it might be, it's like, okay, no, you know what? This is time for the kids and it's good for me and it's good for them. Right. Okay, so third reason. So first reason, uh, focus on delighting in them. Two, helps relationships. relationships. Three, makes memories. memories. Memories are made of this. <laughs> That's right. Dean Martin song. Um, memories for children, the simplest things, um, it, they can become like larger than life yeah. in the eyes of a child. You know, I think that all of it's, us right now, everybody who's listening, just think back to a good memory you have as a child right. doing something. Right now, I'm just going to pause. Right. Okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> that's all I can give you. Um, but if you think about the memories that you have when you were a kid, a lot of times it's not huge, big things like, oh, we went to Disneyland or, oh, we, you know, like 
had a pool put in or, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe there's some of those memories, but it's just, sometimes it's just the little things. Right. Oh, I remember laying out in the, you know, looking at the stars with my dad, and you know? I, I don't know if there's a mathematical equation, but when you're smaller as a, uh, a person, <laughs> the, your image, your, your perspective is that, that, oh, like I, I I've said this before, but, um, our kids, our older kids are like, oh, we used to always do blank. And I'm like, we only did it like once or twice, but for them, it was as if it was massive. Right. And and I'm not saying that to give us an excuse to not do very much, but it's like, you have no idea the impact that those right. small, you know, string of events, or those small family fun days right. um, have a powerful impact on our kids, that those memories will mm -hmm. will help them weather some storms ahead. Because yeah. uh, particularly when they're young and, and they get, even in the, their teen years, those times will be lifelines uh, yeah. to them. And then and that's why it's good to like do videos and pictures and things like that. So you can remember, you yeah. know, remember those good times. And it's even good for parents when you're struggling with your kids to, rem to look back. I know this has happened to me. When you look back on some pictures, you're like, okay, they are good kids. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. I do love them, even though they're, they're driving me crazy right now, you know. Um, I think that those memories are really, really important. That's right. All right. So fourth reason uh, why you should have a family fun day. So we did, again, we did the delight in your child. We talked about relationships that it builds. We talked about just now the memories that it makes. And the fourth, it's actually a taste of heaven. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is for you and the kids. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're talking about passing on the faith to our kids, we have to make it very incarnational. We have to make it very real and tangible. As parents, we're supposed to make the the uh, invisible visible. Um, and um, we talk about the idea that we are um, uh, fun and joy is is what needs to be seen on our faces. If, if yeah. we want our kids to remain Christian, if we want our kids to remain Catholic, they need to see the gospel in our face. And we need to, you know, there are three things that we often do as, uh, in passing on the faith. We, um, we teach the faith, we witness the faith, and we give them an experience of the faith. Yeah. And um, so in word and deed, we need to pass on, what does joy mean? Mm -hmm. What is that joy that they're looking for? Do they, you know, do they know what love is. And we talked about that in the relationship part, but it's like, okay, in this fun, this is what heaven's going to be like, right? Yeah. Heaven is going to be full of joy. It's going to be the best it's party. Gonna be unity. It's going to be unity. You know? It's all these things wrapped together. Right. And, it, and it's like, that's a powerful, powerful teaching moment without any words necessarily having to be spoken. Cause it, mm -hmm. the kids uh, absorb what's going on in their environment, particularly when they're young, but, but that's at right. all ages, they pick up more, yeah. of the vibe you're giving off. They, right. they, they pick up how they're feeling during those times, mm -hmm. that all of that. And, and, and having that kind of clear focus, we're about having fun together. We're, we're, yeah. we're delighting in each other. We're working on our relationships and we're just out for a great adventure. Yeah. Um, that and, is the taste of heaven. Yeah. And I think that I know that for us, when our kids, um, when everybody's over, and we are just sitting outside in the pool yeah. and there's some people in the pool and there's some people sitting around talking and there's some people playing games and just experiencing that peace and yeah. that unity where you are outside in nature, you know, with your, your beloved, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 the people yeah, that yeah. you love so much. It, there's just something about that that God is really present there, yes. you know, and it's not even like you're praying or doing anything. You're just being at peace with each other or like times when we've been at the beach, you know, and we're just sitting there and just like looking at the ocean and having kids like just playing in the sand and you can just relax. It really is like a taste of heaven yeah. or even like in the winter time when you're just like gathered around the fire and you're, you know, it, singing together or doing something together, eating together, preparing things together. It's just, there's something about that unity that God is present. Yeah, you know, it is. It's it. That. That's it. So is that good enough? Hopefully you've, we've convinced you that a family fun nah, day is good I enough. Think so. Yes, exactly. And so, so now let's go to what are we actually talking about? What, okay. what, what could this actually be? What are some and, things that you can do? And and so we are going to reference our handy dandy play and pray um, little guide booklet here. That's right. And um, the first things that I think about yes. um, are, um, are kind of the elements uh and, and by elements i mean kind of nature like the natural elements out there mm -hmm. um meaning family fun days that are oriented in nature like mm -hmm. you, you kind of just referenced right going outside you know there's something awesome about yeah. that that is really attractive to kids again of all ages like um because when we were young 
we would take the kids on a hike or go to the lake or go out, do the, Mm -hmm. those are all awesome. Yeah. And there's something about being in a beautiful place Mm -hmm. in nature that is very attractive for a family fun Mm -hmm. day. Um, going to a lake, you know, um, going, if you're near the ocean, to go to the ocean. When water's um, involved, pools, yeah. splash pad, whatever. Or taking a hike to a waterfall or even walking along a creek or, yep. you know, kind of all of those kinds of things, like just being outdoors or just, there's something about that that can kind of help you slow down and just kind of, you really have that spiritual yeah. energy from nature, to yeah, be yeah. honest with you. You know what I mean by that, right? <laughs> the, in the best sense of the word, in the Catholic sense. But, um, but... Um, so there's nature, but then people ask us all the time about doing things with, um, kids of multiple ages, but I really think that water is such a like uniting thing yeah. because that's all a place, ages. So kids can go swim and just play catch, but then like the little ones can have fun. We've gone to water parks that are so much fun yeah, because for the there's, young and the old. Yeah. Because it's like, oh my gosh, all the kids are contained. I can sit in one spot with the babies and still see, you know, most of the kids running around, they know where I am. You know, there's something about that that is just so, it's nice. It you is, know? It, it, well, again, because the, the goal of this whole idea is to really draw all your kids into something that they like. Right. And so for, and I'll add on to the water, the water, there is so much you could do with just, and again, the book has a ton of ideas and we'll right. go through a couple of them, but another key elements so of nature in general, mm-hmm. water specifically, uh, fire. Um, like, so I'll start with the campfire, right? A a little bonfire or, you know, something in a fire pit Mm -hmm. in your backyard or whatever it might be. There's something really captivating about that. Whether it's roasting marshmallows, whether it's just sitting around singing songs, telling stories, Mm -hmm. watching the fire is there's a, there's a, there's a wonder that's created in that. If you have older kids, get fireworks. Just letting off fireworks, especially if you have a lot of boys. Oh man. They think that's fun, you know. Light anything on fire and you're you're good to go. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah for uh, boys, sparklers, for, for good, you know, if you have a lot of boys, yeah, um, add a little fire, add a touch of danger, and you've got a great <laughs> adventure right there. Perfect recipe. Yes, absolutely. But even like if, uh, even when you're inside the home, having like a fireplace or even like at dinner to like light candles, candles mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of things, like just uh, there is something, again, maybe it's part of the natural world that is really um, attractive and I'm going to jump back for, for just a second, sure. just because we talked about water, but like it, water balloons, you know, oh, spray, yeah, yeah. I was sprinklers, that too. Yeah. using, using the hose. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Doing a slip and slide. Yes. We bought this, um, tarp, uh, not the tarp, the, this like a plastic sheeting that I was going to make a greenhouse out of like so long ago. It's like, it was like $60 and it's a hundred feet and we have had it for probably five years yes. and it is a really, really long slip aside. And we have a big hill. And so we do that yeah. <laughs> a lot, but you can even just get one, even if it's flat to just run and slide, you know, on your stomach. But anyway, those kinds of things, even if you don't have a pool or anything, those kinds of things are really, really very Yeah. Fun. So anyway, I, I'm a big fan and it's also summertime. So we're in the pool mode and we yes. just had a nice big yes. water balloon fight and yeah. the water guns and yeah. everything. Uh, but sometimes like there's so many state parks out there that you can take your kids to, to do all of these things, you know, for a nominal fee. Yes, exactly. Because then there's boating, going canoeing, going kayaking, you know, going fishing, all of those kinds of things that have to do with water are also really, really fun and adventurous. And I think that, um, parents have to remember to, to not, if you're going out on your family fun day, don't do anything that is, involves a lot of standing in line. So like yeah, I personally, part, it's like, right. okay, if your family loves amusement parks, I think that's great. Um, maybe, but that's kind of not really the thing that we're thinking about because, and I find at amusement parks, families tend to split up, you know, the little kids and, go on the little rides. And it can rides. still be fun for well, the depend, family. It depends on how it, big it your family is. it may not be as unifying. And, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you I, have I'm like you. a cluster of kids that are all the same age, say you have three kids, you know, and they're all within like a couple years of each other. Well then, yeah, if you can do things together, you know, but the only thing is that there's a lot of standing in line and all of that. You want to try to uh, eliminate as much uh, pain as possible. <laughs> yeah. The friction involved. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Any kind of like friction involved. And it takes, it does take a little bit of planning, you know, to kind of think ahead of time. What do we want to do? What are the kind of things that we want that our kids would enjoy? Right. And yeah, I think that's getting into how. Sorry. Yeah. 
We're gonna, yeah. We'll get there in a minute. That's right. Okay. And so then last thing is, oh, so what to do? Um, oh, yeah. I, we just said individual experiences instead of communal experiences. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, what else can, what would be another good idea of a, for a family fun day? Well, I, again, um, the, the, the joy of a family fun day, it could be short and sweet. It could be making tents uh, in with pillows and blankets in your 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 home. Mm-hmm. It, it could again, d- as you're looking at the age groups, right? What 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 works? And we'll get into the divergent age group more. You kind of mentioned mm-hmm. that a little bit, um, but really, it, it's it's not essential what you do. Mm-hmm. It's that you do it, yeah. and, and that you aren't thinking purely about yourself. But it's natural to start with yourself. Hey, I like this when I was a kid. Right. Try it out. Yes. But but really be aware of your kids and look at, but, uh, well, I, I'm sliding into challenge just yeah, briefly. Yeah, that, no, that's right. Um, one of our um, challenges, and, and again, I, I know I brought this up in a, a previous podcast, but um, we would do family fun days and some of our teenagers would do nothing but roll their eyes and drag their feet for, yeah. with coming out with us. Yeah. But then in, as the kids got into their 20s, they said they always had a great time. If you got, listen to our hundredth, um, our hundredth podcast, we the kids talk about that, <laughs> and that was I think the first time I heard that was on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. that they actually enjoyed it. So it's, it was kind of a shock. I'm like, really? Because yeah. your face didn't, your yeah. attitude didn't seem to go along with it. But yeah, they said they always ended up having fun. So just as a, a you know, a, a advice. Don't listen to the uh, the objections the of the teenagers <laughs> or the rolling of the eyes. I mean, do try to be responsive in the fact that you want it to be fun. And so you yeah. want to be aware, but don't just take it on face value. That right. if you see eye rolls or them pushing back, did, and did so they actually, really have fun or not? And so question. even um, one thing, too, that will help in that area is if you and your spouse kind of get on the same page, you know, and like take some time. Take some time to really think about, okay, let's try to consider what do we think our kids would like? Let's do a little bit of planning, right? Let's do a little bit of um, inspiration and kind of like thinking outside the box, even brainstorm a little bit and say, okay, we're going to try to do these like three things, even if it's something that's at home that you do. But I think that having a good plan, a good solid plan, and then you can say to your kids when they give any objections, you'd be like, you know what? We really thought about this. Let's just try it out. Right. You know, and, and, humorous. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then sometimes, again, you don't want to do this all the time. It's just like, no, we're just doing it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and ultimately that's what you as you're the parent, right? You know, put on your big boy pants and <laughs> you know, try to be smart, try to yeah. be sensitive, be united and then yeah. move forward. Yeah. So we, we're pulling some ideas too, from our family retreat book, um, which has lots of ideas in here. So one of the objections too is money, yeah. right? We, we don't, don't have money right. for it. Um, believe me, for most of our marriage, we have not had a lot of money. <laughs> but this is why I say things like state parks and all of that are really so great yes. because even just to get into them, I don't mean like the Grand Canyon, you know, but just like your lakes and like even state parks or not national national parks are a little bit more, but but those are places that you can go and you can, there's a, usually a lot of things to do at like, even one of our local parks has like a pool and they have mini golf and they have, you know, all of these things mm-hmm. that, and it's like a reduced rate for just kind of like serving the community. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, tap into others in your, in your local area and, and don't try to keep up with the Joneses, meaning, oh, well, all, all the other families are going to this amusement park or right. whatever it might be right. that costs a lot of money. Right. If a, a money is an issue for you, eliminate it as an issue, right. T- take it off the table and say, okay, we're going to do things that are free or right. basically free. Right. And it might involve time, might take a little planning or what yeah. have you. You can definitely do that. You can yeah. make it happen and, uh, you know, tap into some great families that are in the community that might be a little bit ahead of you or been in the area longer if you're new to that community yes. and find out great ways to to save some money and have some fun. Like, you know, this is 20, a great role for the Internet. You yeah, know, you can just absolutely. go ask on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look on Google for for options, see reviews and, and try out and, and be comfortable exploring and saying, hey, that was a kind of a dud. We'll try another one. That's OK. Yes. You know, it, and and uh, another objection in addition to um, money is time. You know, yeah. those are two big um, things that we have to spend. And it's about <laughs> budgeting, budgeting our time and budgeting our money. That's so true, yeah. And um, and it's it's about prioritizing what matters. And so for us, we do Sunday fun day, right? Um, and that was a day where we, tr- you know, we weren't working. 
Um, and, you know, we didn't have sports practices, at least on, on Sundays. And so we could sit around. We could play cards. We could play games. We could go out to, for a hike. We could go swim in the pool because we put it on our calendar and let our kids know from when they were young, mm-hmm. this is a habit of the home. And so when you're start, if you're starting something new, it's harder to get to break the inertia or to break in to a new routine. Um, but the, the question isn't whether or not you can do it. It's, it's just how you're going to do it. And you, you right. do it by prioritizing it and say, hopefully you see the rationale for why it's so important mm-hmm. and you make the time for it. And you, you get together with your spouse and make sure it's the best time for the family. Um, but you don't take no for an answer. So another thing to recognize is that when, and this is something that you can think about as you're planning, and that is keeping in mind your infants and toddlers, because that can be tricky if you have older kids as well. And and this is why I think the planning part is so important, because if you are trying to plan like around nap time oh, and you yes. say, okay, you know what? I know families who would do this for like multiple weekends, especially in the summertime, they would go to mass on Saturday night so they could get up early and, and leave right their up. house at like eight o'clock or whatever. So they were back by nap time. Exactly. Yeah. So they could be back by nap time and then everybody would just fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. 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 So think about that you know? and, and yeah. knowing who you're serving, where, where are the kids and what's exactly. going to be uh, peaceful. Cause if you have a kid melting down, is that going to be really fun for you or for anybody else? Right. Right. No, let's plan that. And then if you need like one of those like baby hiking backpacks or something, see if you can borrow one from somebody because right. those kinds of backpacks, those kind of like baby gear that you just need for a couple months can make a huge difference. Right. And so instead of investing in one, see if you can just, you know, borrow one from somebody for a while or whatever. I, they should be able to rent things like that if you think about it, because it's like, can I rent this for like three months while my kids use it? And then they just come back. <laughs> you know, another challenge, we, we've kind of referenced it more than once before, but is the idea of couple disunity um, on this. So, yeah. Know, one, uh, our whole podcast is oriented towards couples having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, getting on the same page right. is essential. If you are disunited, if you're not uh, really on the same page, this is really going to be hard. This is going to be an mm-hmm. uphill battle. Um, you already talked about, well, when the kids object, this is why you need um, unity on the front end. So respect that somebody, your, your spouse may have a different perspective than you. Yeah. Uh, respect that they they may have a better idea than you. Mm-hmm. Uh, even willing to it appreciate. It is possible. It is possible. <laughs> and you could say, mm, that might be a good idea. <laughs> you may be right. You may be right. That's right. Um, well, the last thing that I think is probably one of the... Probably the biggest thing in this day and age is screens. Mm. I would really encourage you to ha- leave everybody's phone at home except for mom or dads. Yeah. So you can, you know. Be free and focused on each other. Yeah. Even on the car the rides, kids, right? Exactly. Because the car rides, you can even use the car rides for time spent together. And, you know, you don't want to make wherever you're going too far because it's just like a day trip, really. But, um. But I think that that's, those screens can really take away. And if, they, and if the kids want to take pictures, they can just use your phone. Yeah. I mean, lots of people have had family fun days for years and years and years yeah. <laughs> without any screens or anything like that. But I think that that's an important part of eliminating those distractions and yeah. really being able to focus on each other. And, and, and also, too, uh, remember that we're calling you to live out your family fun day, yeah. not our family fun day. Yeah. Right? What, what's going to excite you? What's going to fill you right. up? And what's going to give you, meaning your mm-hmm. collective you, the, the royal we of your family? What's yeah. going to give you, you know, we talked about that, that emotional love tank. Yeah. So there's a fun tank too, you know, like what's going <laughs> to, what's going to fill all of you up? Yeah. What's going to bring you some joy yeah. um, to really get into the next week? And, and we do think that it's kind of like date nights. Like you really should have a weekly, but boy, you better have at least a monthly date night. Yeah. And the same is true with a family fun day. Ideally, it's on a weekly basis. You have something that is really dedicated. Think towards, about it's like a date with your kids. It is. You it know? is. And it's all as a group, right? There's special time, which is different. I know there's a lot of things that we could be doing, yeah. um, but we really have to prioritize it, especially when you have kids of different ages. It's actually really, really important yeah. to have them all together, rowing, if you will, in the same direction, sometimes literally. Mm-hmm. Um, but but this fun time is gonna is going to give you life to serve your family. To be All right, let's just do a quick fire of a couple. Um, just going to throw out a bunch of yeah, ideas you, you for things that you guys, that you can do together. Um, do karaoke. 
at home. You can use YouTube. You can use just like a hairbrush microphone, <laughs> you know. Yep. Or you can have uh, a full karaoke machine if you want. Exactly. Uh, you sit outside, watch the stars, um, play laser tag, just using flashlights, you we know, just love at doing home. That. Yes. And we actually got one of those like a laser tag, like um, set, you know, from Costco or whatever that we, but you can even just do it with flashlights. You can play kick the can, you know, you can play, um, we used to call a prisoner, but where yeah. you, you know, just like yeah, yeah, capture right. people and you know, whatever. Um, have your kids make dinner, have your kids plan it's and fun cook for a meal. You, maybe, maybe, maybe possibly, uh, you know, make a room for it. Like we talked about that before, right. even make your house into an obstacle course or make an obstacle course outside for the kids. Yeah. You know, I remember the older kids when they were like, uh, 10 or 12 would do that like for the younger kids and they would have like a little pool and then they would have jump over this and then, the, you know, like, and then throw this ball in here and you know, whatever they would just make like little and, contests for each other. And, and not that it, it depends on the, how the activity goes and it depends on your kids, but like even crafts, right. Yeah. You know, like um, we had our, our older daughter who's home visiting right now. And yesterday she got all the younger kids all together and she just without, I don't think any of our involvement just started doing crafts together with them, doing yeah. some art, projects and they loved it yeah and they were all in yeah. and so it's like but i i have no doubt that's because we did that with her you know i remember one time we just got a piece of um poster board and i drew like a mountain or something and and i'm not an artist but we have kids who are artists <laughs> and then we just started telling a story and everybody just started drawing on like we had a focal point you know so we could start have okay like here's, right. here's the start and then Everybody, you can either pass it around and everybody draws something, or you can all just draw something at once, or you can do it like a story, like everybody adds something to the story and they draw something on there. You know, I mean, all of these things, you can just create, you can get one of those blank books and you can like make up a story right. and actually write it down. You know, like you can... Um, even like all of those, all kinds of like building games, like Jenga and even like Legos right. and you know, even so if you have kids who are really into Legos, then take that time, jump all the Legos on the floor and just like everybody build something right. together. You right. know, that's not my preferred thing to do, but you yeah. know, if your kids love it, then and, go and, for it. And you got all the, all games in general, but like party yeah. games and other things that you may have say, oh, we only do that at, at birthdays or we only do that at special, well, how about exactly. A special... Something like pin the tail on the donkey know, or like second. doing balloons or, you know, like just like a dance and freeze game. Like little kids love that, yeah. you know, um, it, just gosh, sitting down, just like reading books together, yeah. you know, like all and of the these hope is, is that it isn't just one little like, oh, that's 10 minutes and we're done. It, it's it, we, we, when we say family fun day. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the entire day, but it's more than just a 15, yeah. 20 minute operation. Right. You right. look at this and say, this is an hour plus. Right. Of time invested with our people, with yeah. our tribe, with our little yeah. family. And, yeah. Uh, and there's even things like we talked about going out into nature. You can do geocaching. Yeah. Uh, you can look that up. You can do like we've, even we've like We've made a, uh, little hunts, like treasure hunts for yeah. the kids on mm -hmm. their own. And yeah. There's things. Or even do like a nature scavenger hunt, you know. Oh my gosh. We just, I, one of my friends just showed me this neat um, oh, app, app, Merlin, yeah. Yeah. where you can bring it and it will record bird sounds identify. and then identify mm -hmm. it'll record and then identify the bird sounds like around you and then you can look for those actual birds and it's just so cool but like things like that could make a you know a nature walk even more right. enthralling and fun and you know all of that so um but even just like taking pictures and things along the way, even like creating like a little story or making a movie. Oh my gosh, we used to do that. All, we've done that several <laughs> times plays and where we would do not just like a play, but like a movie, like tell the story of the three bears and get all the little kids involved, you know, or like tell the story of the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. So we have some great memories. And great then costumes, we, great acting, lots right. of humor. Exactly. And, and then you have that fun. forever, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's a great memory maker and memory reminders. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so if you have a teen who can like be the cameraman, you know, or the director, and then the little kids can act stuff out. I mean, if you're a kind of family that likes that, you know, like, right. you know, there's all different kinds of things that you can do. But even like um, going to a thrift store and giving everybody $5 and then they maybe they have to pick a name of another family member and they have to go 
buy something for that family member, you know, and then just like, then you bring it all back together and everybody gets a gift, you know, and they can say, oh, this is why I gave this to you or, yes, yes. you know, whatever. Uh, you know, bowling is a really, bowling, mini golf, those kinds of things that yeah. we've always found really fun, even though some of us are better bowlers than others and better mini golfers. And, and then also there, there's things where if you, in the, in the book, we have yeah. the free, we have the little bit, and then we have some that want to go bigger. It's like, I mean, yeah. if you have the means and you were like, oh, what do we do? Maybe there is a, a travel. Like for us, travel is actually a value. Like we travel mm -hmm. um, with our kids. Oftentimes we're driving in the car to visit family, but we're, we've also traveled some locations where we want it. You know, sometimes yeah. we've gone to, to war memorial uh, battlefield sites, um, you know, uh, Williamsburg, colonial sites, um, you mm -hmm. know, or travel to places like Florida or, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, don't, don't slow down, but don't feel like you have to do big things all the time. But yeah, but big things every now and then is, is really fun. And if, right. it, if it means something to you, if it's really going to add value in it, and it and it is part of what makes you unique. Yeah, lean into that, be comfortable with that and prioritize your your particularly your time and your money towards things that matter most. And so if you look at your family, uh, where are you at in the, the joy quotient? You know, where's the fun meter right. in your home right now? And I remember we did a family board meeting uh, a number of years, two, two years ago. One of the couples came to us and said, I, I think our rallying cry is to bring some joy back to our family. We were, yeah. do, were getting too rigid. Everyone was just doing their things. It was kind of very focused on logistics and everyone was just checking the boxes. <laughs> and they're like, we want to bring some of that joy back. And they right. really, part of their thing was that every, I think it was every other week they, they did something fun. Yeah. And then they actually, I think, invited one child to help pick what their fun activity was going to be for Love the it. next uh, next time. And, yeah. you know, and it went in order and it just it, it really created a deep sense of community for them. Yeah. Uh, you will never look back and say, oh, what a waste. <laughs> You know, you'll never look back and say, I wish we didn't have as many great memories with our kids. <laughs> you you, you know? may look back and say that was uh, crazy. That was, <laughs> that was crazy. And that didn't exactly turn out the way that we planned. And we've definitely had experiences like that. But I think it's G.K. Chesterton that said a crisis is an adventure wrongly considered or, or something, something, like that. <laughs> something along those lines. And so I think that... Um, and that we have to recognize that one of the most important things you can bring to your family fun day is a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's for, starts with mom and dad. Yep. And then it can be contagious, you know, for the kids. But even if there's like, we've done things where it's like, we go someplace to go on a hike and there's just like mosquitoes everywhere or people are crying or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Hey, we remember it. And then you, you as the adult too can also say, you know what? We're all going to go get ice cream. This yeah. was such a disaster, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, or like we went camping this one time and oh, it Lord. was such, it was a disaster. That's in I, here. I, I that's think in our, here. we have like, yes, that's in the it, book. There's too. a little PTSD. Yes. I think I've ruined all yeah. of my family yeah, from yeah. ever camping again. Yes. But it was so hot. And then actually went camping another time and it was like freezing. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night and Mike, we switched, um, we switched sleeping bags, remember? Because oh. I was like so cold and you were like, here, take my sleeping bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is such, <laughs> why is this such, it's always so a wreck. But you remember those things. And, 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 and that's okay. And, and so that's yeah. why I want to say that, that <laughs> things that were at the time disasters have become pretty funny jokes now. Exactly. <laughs> and as long as everyone survived, you yes. know, it's a good story to tell. Yes. And it's like, oh, remember that time where, I mean, this, this is actually, you know, it was awful and that we were sweating and we couldn't sleep and it was like, but everyone remembers it. And we yeah. had a good time in the other stuff. Oh, but you remember the, we went to this great arcade and we were all playing laser tag together. See, and if you have like da -da -da -da. a really bad time, then in the midst of that, if you do something fun, then it's like an oasis. And yes. then you really remember that. Uh, it's kind of like when you're, when you're really, you work really hard all day or you're out like, you know, in <laughs> rafting and you go and get this sandwich and it's just normally a mediocre right, sandwich, exactly. but, but then you get it and you're so tired. You haven't eaten, it's you like haven't drank. the drink. best thing you've it's ever Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Exactly. So anyway. All right, well, I think we can wrap it up. All right, that's so, good. so that, that's that's our, 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 our challenge Inspiration to you. for a family fun day. And, it, and it's part of the play and pray challenge, but it's also just a good habit. No matter when, really focus in on having fun in your family to mm. really build the joy. That's what I, that's you our goal. You want to do your uh, prayer? Yeah, let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we ask you to be in the hearts and the minds of the moms and dads, no matter where they are in their life, where they're at in um, 
their parenting, that you would bring them joy, and that joy would be um, uh, contagious, and that they would bring that to their kids, that they would share that uh, joy with their kids, and that they might invest in the fun uh, of their family. They might play and delight with their kids in a new way. Uh, help us to not always be focused on the things and really f- prioritize the people that matter most. In your name we pray. Amen. amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Again, uh, all the resources we talked about in the beginning are available at messyfamilyproject.org. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.